Hey, welcome to another episode of The Wireless Way. I'm your host, Chris Whitaker. And as always, I'm grateful that you're here and I'm grateful for my guest, Matt McNamara. I ran into Matt, shocker here, I ran into him. I found him on uh, LinkedIn and then I discovered he had a YouTube channel on one of my most favorite topics, MDM. And again, I did a survey recently and found about half of you, not even sure what that means, mobile device management. And, and to be a little more specific, he is with IBM and he sells Moss 360 on a daily basis. That's his uh, his purpose in life, uh, at least Monday through Friday. So Matt, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm glad you could Thanks be here. Thanks for having me. Doing great. Excellent, man. So yeah, on that note, what's not in the bio per se on LinkedIn? How did you get here? Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So I really pretty much, Chris, just stumbled into the MDM world, had no idea what it was. I was working commercial real estate and this was a year or two after COVID. And as you probably know, commercial real estate really dried up and the opportunities were few and far between. And I was like, you know what? I keep seeing all these people on YouTube and and LinkedIn, they're making a ton of money with, in tech sales. I got to find a way to get into tech sales. So I did a, did some research. I stumbled on an opportunity at IBM. I hit apply. I thought I was never going to hear from a recruiter or a hiring manager whatsoever. Within two weeks, I was hired to join the Mass360 team that sits in Philadelphia. I've been here for three years. So our office is in Philly. My territory is out in California. So that's a bit crazy. I'm out there quite a bit visiting with business partners who bring us a lot of opportunities and deals and also visiting with customers, current customers or new prospects to make sure they have all the needs taken care of when it comes to managing and securing their mobile devices. But Chris, yeah, it was just something I stumbled upon on LinkedIn. I hit apply and it really worked out. Been here the last three years. It's the best job I ever had and I've learned a ton. What was the learning gap like? How, how long did it take you from being a new hire to where yeah. you could do a call by yourself? How, how long did it take you to get your arms around it? I would say it took between six to nine months. So yeah. I am not full transparency. I am not technical whatsoever. I don't have a technical background. I could plug my phone into the wall and that's about it. So I was nervous, Chris, going into the job, being that a lot of the people in the sales positions and obviously the sales engineers are very, very technical. When I think about the rest of the folks on my team, I'm probably the least technical, but I would say it took me six to nine months. So it was a lot of hopping on customer calls. I'm not running the sales opportunity, but someone else on the team is, and I'm just shadowing. I'm taking notes. I'm constantly in the demo portal. And then out of nowhere, Chris, you mentioned it. I started the Mass360 YouTube channel and I was posting two to three short demo videos every single week on that channel and also posting them on LinkedIn. And that content really helped me get really good with the product because I needed to know the ins and outs, needed to know how to talk the language of the product in order to successfully post on both LinkedIn and YouTube. But yeah, it was a big learning curve. Six to nine months before I didn't have to have my sales partner, my sales engineer, Jason, who's been amazing, he's been here 10 years, have to lead the calls. Yeah. You know what? And, I, and that's spot on. I've been managing sales people in tech sales for 20 years and that's about it. If you're sharp, six months, but on average it was nine months, six months, nine months to figure out the processes and how to log in and stuff and all the features and benefits and all the gotchas and what's an ICB look like. It takes time. That's encouraging because I know a lot of my listeners are technology advisors and I hear it all the time. Chris, I know Fiverr. I know SD-WAN. I know UCAS. I just don't know mobility. I ain't got time to learn it. If I learned it, they can in. learn it. They're way more it? technical than me, Chris. If I can learn it, they can learn it. Thank you. And I, you can see my background. I'm, I'm an yeah. army guy. I spent 10 years in the army jumping out of airplanes and blowing up stuff. If I can do it, yes, anyone can do it. I, I don't, I'm not an engineer. I just, I know a lot of engineers and uh, through osmosis, I pick up all their hot buzz language, right? I don't know what half of it means, but I want to say fake it till you make it. It works. Okay. So great. So three years in six to nine months to get it. Yeah. Uh, so that means you've had a little over two years of running your own calls and all. What kind of trends are you seeing when it comes to, to this topic of MDM? And again, just to clarify, if you're listening and you didn't catch it, I'm not talking about mobile device management holistically, A to Z, soup to nuts. I'm talking specifically about a software solution. In fact, Matt, you're the expert here. Define what does MDM mean to you and, and, and tell us more about what are you seeing and, and what kind of trends yeah. So to answer your trend question, the biggest trend, Chris, that I've seen over the last, say, 12 to 24 months, the last one to two years, 
is laptops. So when I first started out, the majority of my conversations were focused on how can we manage and secure an iPhone or an Android device. Over time, I would say, especially this year, the majority of my customer conversations have not been iPhone, Android focused. They're a part of the project, but I would say they're secondary to Windows laptops and MacBooks. So what a lot of Mass360 customers will do is they'll start by just enrolling their iPhones and Android devices into Mass360. As they start to get comfortable, they could see that, hey, I could also manage and secure my Windows laptops and MacBooks in the same environment. I'm using an RMM tool and a separate imaging tool to take care of my Windows laptops. I could probably do all of that within Mass360. So I would say the biggest trend, Chris, that I've seen is now another buzzword, UEM, Unified Endpoint Management. So all the devices in the environment under one roof. I would say that's the biggest trend. And that's been a very lucrative trend for the folks on my team because that a lot of times doubles and triples the opportunity size, the ACV size of our opportunities and conversations we're having with customers. Wow. What's an average size of the customers you're talking to? Do you personally have a minimum or will you do one device or is it a thousand it's, devices? Yeah, Chris. So we used to have someone on the team that focused on the smaller opportunities. That person now has a territory. So I'm, I do everything. So I'll do one device and we have an opportunity right now for 20,000 devices. So it's SMB, small mom and pop shops. I have four demos today after this call. I have two with small mom and pop shops, typical conversations with those folks. The main issues they have is, hey, Matt and Chris, it's taken me 45 minutes to an hour to set up a single iPhone for an employee. That's the big issue they have to a large enterprise. And their main issue is around phishing links within text messages and emails. How do we prevent and protect against those security threats? And then opportunities for 10,000, 20,000 devices. It really runs the gamut. Again, it's pretty fun when you're having a conversation with a small business owner. Next thing you're having a conversation with a CTL. So it's pretty cool. By chance, we just come, coming out of a holiday weekend. Did you go to a cookout yesterday or anything with the weekend? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is my next cookout. question. is going to be a little bit about that. Uh, you're at a cookout. You're at a family event, neighborhood event. And someone says, hey, Matt, good to meet you. What do you do? H how do you answer that question? Yeah, I would ask them a couple questions. I would say, did your company, when they hired you, did they provide you a phone? Did they provide you a laptop to do your job? Yeah, they provided me an iPhone. Okay, so what my company does, Chris, it controls what you have access to on your iPhone. So a lot of companies, they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, I'm going to hand over an iPhone to Chris, and I want Chris to use that device to be productive. I want him to have access to email and the five to six applications he needs to do his job and nothing else. But I don't want Chris going on to TikTok. I don't want Chris going on to YouTube. I don't want Chris going on to inappropriate websites. That's what my company does. That's what the software I sell at IBM does. It controls what an employee has access to and makes sure they have everything they need on their device, whether it's a Windows laptop, a MacBook, an iPhone, or Android device, to be productive in their roles. Very good. Very good. And uh, do you feel like most people get that? They're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Or do they still go, I think oh, it depends great. on the person. <laughs> Chris, if it was me back in the day when I had no idea what MDM was, I would probably ask a couple more questions to that person to better understand it. Like my sister has no idea what I do. But my brother, who's very technical, he got it within two seconds. Got it. Yeah. And that's my experience too. Because I, being a technology, I call myself a consultant to consultants in a way. Um and that's usually how people do get them. Like, like I just help others that are technology learn and expand. And I call this an advanced service, right? It's advanced solution compared to basic solutions, just connectivity, fiber, coax, dial tone. Not, not, you, get, it, it, you get a little more advanced here when you're looking at the MDM. And so do you mention laptops? Again, looking back over the last 10 or 100 deals, whatever you did, what percentage involved laptops versus only handheld devices like tablets and smartphones? I would say, so you're asking only laptop focus? Uh, 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 any laptop, a mixture of laptop, laptop or only laptop. Yeah. yeah, Chris, I would say 60%. And when I started wow. out, that was a lot lower. I would say it was around 20, 25%. What, what do you think's driving that? What, what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked. I, I have an opinion. Uh, shocker. Okay. I, I think that the, especially in the tech industry, cybersecurity is becoming... Uh, leading conversation. It used to be just something everybody worried about. 
But now there's a lot of companies popping up that are doing endpoint detection. I'm not a cybersecurity guy, so my cybersecurity friends are cringing right now. ERM and DDoS attacks and all this, all this software and, and what you call them a CISO, right? Chief Information Security Officer. That role didn't exist a couple of years ago, mainstream. And I'm sure companies had them, but now it's, if you're a big company, you have a CISO, even if it's a fractional or full-time. So yeah, I think cybersecurity conversation is what I feel like for even from our, my business, my day-to-day job. Cybersecurity leads us, it's a great segue into, oh, by the way, how are you securing your devices? How are you securing your mobile devices in the field? Oh, you all your delivery people use tablets to track their routes and their inventory. How are you securing those devices? How are you making sure they're not on their lunch break using that that T-Mobile SIM to watch their catch up on their YouTube series or catching up on a Hulu or Netflix? So that's one theory. I, I think we're just in much more cyber secure aware environment and it's just it's really good for you and for anyone to send the mdm business that what do you think about that does that make sense no i agree with you i think most folks just weren't aware even mass 360 customers so i handle every account in the state of california there's been some companies that have been with us for a very long time they spend a lot of money with us and the first time i have a conversation i'll ask hey what does it look like to get a windows laptop set up walk me through that process they're asking why are you asking about windows laptops we could also manage and secure those. They just don't know. So Mm -hmm. we're trying to get it out there, get the message out there that every MDM, every UEM can manage and secure Windows laptops and MacBooks right next to your iPhones and your Androids. Yeah. What's IBM's position? Is there a preferred acronym to describe the product? Is it, I mean, because I have seen UEM popping up more and more lately because it's more inclusive of everything. What's the the company line? Are you guys an MDM? I say MDM. I say MDM. I ha- I've been here three years. I have not said UEM. I probably said it a couple of times if, if, a cu- if a customer asked me, but I just say MDM. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that that seems still, that still seems to be more common place in that mobility uh, ecosystem. Let's pivot a little bit, still same topic, but different yeah. part of it. I'd like to spend a little time talking about BYOD and bring hmm. your own device. Um, I've worked at companies that have given me phones. I have worked at companies that say, hey, use your own phone and you're on your own. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm logging into OneDrive. I'm logging into Salesforce.com. I'm logging into Outlook. I'm storing company data on my personal phone. Sometimes you get a stipend. Sometimes you don't. What are you seeing in terms of BYOD and why would someone call you and do business with you in Moss 360 in a BYOD, exclusive BYOD environment? Yeah. So good question, Chris. I would say right before I joined IBM, I was working commercial real estate, as I said, and I was using this phone, my personal device for work. That company did not have an MDM in place sitting on top of my BYOD device to protect my corporate data. When I left the organization, that company, like any company, can cut off the connection to my email and my application. So I'm no longer receiving any emails going forward to my personal device. However, Chris, if I wanted to, I could go into my old Outlook app and gain access to any email that was sent prior to that connection getting dropped. That's the biggest issue I see with folks who use a B or leverage a BYOD environment who don't have an MDM in place. They have no idea, no way to protect corporate data and wipe that corporate data in the event an, an employee moves on to a different organization, or they're terminated. So I would say that is probably the biggest issue I see across the board. Folks come to us and they say, hey, I have no way to protect the corporate data if an employee is terminated. How do you do that within Mass360? We could selective wipe that device. It's only going to wipe off the work side or the work profile on that device. It's not going to touch the personal side of the phone. So I would say, Chris, that's definitely the biggest issue I've seen across the board. What about you when it comes to... BYD. Yeah, interesting story. I, and I love that story. And that's actually not one that I've thought much about, and, but you're exactly right. My last, uh, my last hoorah when I left. Yeah. I, in fact, I got to admit for a month, I was really, I found it really hard to just delete that Outlook account because I, I, back yeah. in my head, I might still need those contacts. I might need to get a hold of somebody, whatever. Finally, I said, I'm just so busy. I don't need it. It's, it's a distraction because it keeps asking you to log in because your device is going, Hey, Password's not working. I don't know what's going on here. So anyway, I was on a call a month or so ago, maybe two months now, with a large equipment rental company, Mm -hmm. hundreds of locations across the country. And one of the questions I love to ask 
especially when there's like this big sense of urgency when the clients, hey, we really need to get this. We need to launch this. How fast can you do this? Whatever. Hey, what happened? What triggered this conversation? Because normally I'm like, I'm trying to convince companies, yeah. that, hey, you need to do this soon, sooner than later. But this is reversed. The, the, the client, the prospect was like, hey, we're in a hurry here. How fast can you do this? And I asked the question, I said, hey, I'm just curious, what happened? And, and, and we're on Zoom call and, and they're in a conference room together. And I see them look at each other and we really can't talk about it much because there's a le- some legal action pending. Yeah. Like, really? Wow, that sounds, that sounds serious. He goes, in a nutshell, one of our top salespeople abruptly quit because he didn't get a promotion he wanted. And then the coming weeks thereafter, we start getting calls from all of our top accounts saying, hey, so-and-so is calling us. He's got our inventory list. He knows what we're paying. He's got a copy of our contracts. And of course, there's a not that they said, hey, we make people sign an NDA, non-disclosure, non-compete. And I'm like, really? Yeah. He logged into his own iCloud account and then logged into Salesforce and through his emails, just started saving all these documents to his personal yeah. iCloud account, logged out of his iCloud account, wiped his phone, turned it into HR when he left. No one had any idea. Goes home, logs into his personal iCloud account on his Mac, and voila, has all of our top customers. He has all of our billing revenue information. He has copies of our contracts, and he went to work for our number one competitor. Ouch. Talk about yeah. So yeah, the, the board of directors, the C level are like, this can never happen again. What can you do? And of course, with Moss 360, you can uh, limit, you can only log into this one iCloud account. You can limit what you do with that yes. cloud storage. So I thought, again, how big a deal is, how often is that going to happen to a client? You know, who knows? It's mobile device insurance in the sense that the data insurance, you hope you never need it, but you better have it when you do need it. Yep. Another interesting a use case I heard of. I'd be curious to know if this uh, geofencing does that ever come up in your conversations? How, how do you use a couple times last week? And what was the if you as much as you can share of the use case or yeah, how did they yeah. want to use it? The, the use case was at, was actually Android scanners, the scan guns that go inside of a manufacturing facility. They didn't want the employees to remove those scan guns from the facility. It sounded like a couple of those devices got stolen, so we set up geofencing to say, hey. If the scan guns or the Android tablets leave the facility within this zip code, forget what the radius was, we are going to take retroactive actions on these devices, essentially make them a brick so they can't be used. Wow. So I didn't, so Master 60 can be deployed to the scanner itself or was it just the tablets? Scanner, scan guns too. So we can do anything with an Android operating system, iOS, Windows, and Mac. Got it. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So- you, as a sales professional selling to a BYOD customer, what kind of objections do you hear? And the ones that you win, what do those deals look like? Why Again, what I'm hoping to do is for the listeners, if, if you're listening and your client has BYOD and you're going, gosh, should I call IBM, uh, Moss 360 rep and figure out how to, if, if this is an opportunity, what does that opportunity look like? Where, where are people winning deals with BYOD and Moss 360? So your, to your first question, what was your first question, Chris? I'm not even sure. I was rambling on there. <laughs> it was no, Chris. It was a good. It was a good question. It was around. Well, the yeah, when you're talking customers. to BYOD customers, that's uh, right. The objections. What, what's what's the use case? What's what is making someone go? Hey, look. Yeah, I got a thousand BYOD users. I need you for this. Is it, why are they, they buying? They're buying for that story that you just said, mm-hmm. and the story where an employee leaves, and we need to make sure the corporate data is protected on that device going forward. They no longer should have access to that corporate data. It does not belong to them. I would say the biggest objection uh, we get across the board, any MDM seller, is they are not going to want this software on their personal device. It's like we're spying on them. We only have access and visibility into what we're pushing down from Mass360. So we'll have access to email. We'll have access to any applications, any corporate settings that we're pushing down to these personal devices. We're not going to have access to pictures. We're not going to have access to text messages, anything else outside of the corporate related items that we're pushing down to the devices from Mass360. So I would say that's a pretty easy one to get around when you tell a story like the one you just told, Chris. So it's important that we go into these conversations with relevant use cases, relevant stories, relevant case studies of other folks who had unfortunate issues pop up like the one you just told. We want to make sure that doesn't happen with you folks. 
That's right. No, that's a good point. Do you ever get involved? And in, I, I feel like I've made the recommendation or I've asked the question, hey, what does HR say about this? Do you have any employee handbook policies or guidelines stating, hey, here's our security posture with mobile devices. If you have BYOD, if you're going to work here, you need an initial here that we're going to put this MDM on your phone for purpose of data, corporate data only. Does, does that topic ever come up with you and your clients? Or like, hey, what's your policy? Or you don't have one? Maybe you should include it. Because if it's in the handbook and it's mm -hmm. in their employment agreement, that now it's less scary, or at least they're like the full disclosure about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's popped up a couple of times. I would say it's not as frequent as you would think where a customer comes and says, hey, we're going to try to do this BYOD thing with Mass360. Can you help us write some sort of document that we're going to send to all the employees that kind of lists what we're doing here, what we're looking to accomplish? And also importantly to the employee side, what we're going to have access to. So we need to make it crystal clear. We're only having access to the corporate data, the corporate related items that we're pushing down from the portal. But Chris, I would say that's come up maybe five or six times. In, yeah. In three well, I imagine if they're smart, they know you're, that's not your swim lane. That They Probably, need to go to yeah. HR, legal advisor, those other partners that can help them with that. But no, that's interesting. How about deploying the service? Yeah. You, I mean, when you do you sell it and once the contract's signed, you move on to the next one? Or do you are you overseeing the deployment? Is there any I got some ideas, but I'd love to hear from you what some common challenges if you say you have a thousand devices across five states, getting it deployed to all the devices. Do you guys help with that or any best yeah. practices you've seen? We do help with that. So we have folks on the Mass360 team that are de dedicated to onboarding. When we do sell an account, we don't just sell it and leave. Because if we do that money comes out of my pocket because we get paid also on renewals. So I need right. to make sure these folks are happy and we'll also take support calls as well. But we do have a, a team, like I said, Chris, dedicated to onboarding. And it depends on the scope of the project as it could be a bit complicated. Like you said, if you have a thousand devices out there and they're deployed out in the field being used by employees, that's a whole different barrel of problems than brand new devices you're purchasing through a Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. We would have to sit down with the customer, come up with a deployment plan that's really structured, and maybe it's just we do a phase project where we do 100 now, and we do 100 next month, 100 next month, 100 next month, as we're rolling out new devices via Verizon or, or AT&T Mobile. But yeah, we have a dedicated team here that focuses on that effort. Yep, yep. I, I, that's what I see too. There, there's kind of two flavors rolling out to existing devices in the field. But yeah, more importantly, especially for organizations that manage the entire ecosystem, renewals are getting a tech update, tech refreshes. Oh, you got a phone that's four years old? Okay, great. We'll get your new phone, have it shipped here. We'll put the MDM on it and we ship it to you with it already set up and ready to go. Yeah. That, that works great for a corporate environment. But yeah, that again, that that whole BYOD, that's a whole other ball game. I feel that that situation doesn't exist with BYOD. But I, I definitely see there's something there. It's not gonna, It's not a great fit for every company. But any company that's still, especially if you're in healthcare or insurance or in the financial industry, real mm -hmm. estate, I mean, anywhere there's big money involved, it seems very prudent and wise to have a BYOD MDM strategy versus not. You need it. If especially you, you mentioned healthcare, in order to be HIPAA compliant on your mobile devices, you need policies in place via an MDM to make sure you're meeting those requirements. If you don't, you could be in big trouble. When it comes to competitors, do you? I hear a lot about Microsoft Intune in my world because oh, it comes yeah. with Office 365. Oh, yeah. So I heard two things. Oh, we have Microsoft Intune. And then the second sentence is, it's incredibly hard to set up and we're not really sure what we're doing. I don't never heard of someone like, oh, I love it. It's great. We don't need your service, whatever. What's uh, your thoughts around competing offers and uh, how does Microsoft 360 stand yeah. out? Or is it one analogy I've heard someone say, MDM software is like bottled water. They're all the same. They just have different labels. Exactly. Labor. I, I really like that. I'm going to steal that and start using that on my customer calls because I get asked that all the time. What's the difference between Mass360 and Intune, a VMware, and AirWatch? And it really depends on the conversation with the customer and their use cases. But Chris, I would say 90% of the time, at the end of the day, when the use cases are pretty basic, we all are going to do the exact same thing technically. So no matter who they go to, they're probably going to be taken care of from a technical perspective. Mass 360, we're not the cheapest solution out there. So if the customer, if they look at their decision criteria and price is number one, I always recommend a few of our competitors because they're probably going to be a better fit for their specific project. But if price maybe isn't their biggest concern, but getting the product set up the first time correctly 
and then post sale support where you're not going to have to call one 800 number to get help with the product because all these products, there's going to be issues that pop up with an any MDM that they decide to move forward with. Then a mass 360 might be a better fit. But that's right. I always tell people you give pay for right? The the same. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Okay. So Matt, we've talked about a lot of things here. I talked about BYOD, why someone would buy it, some trends and use cases. Any interesting other anecdotal stories, anything else you can share with us to help drive this point home that Moss 360 is a great solution and every company with devices should be looking at it. What say you? Yeah, good question. One that comes to mind, Chris, is the first time I met my girlfriend. So my current girlfriend, I've been with her a little over a year. This I met her with the dating app, does it? It was dating app. I met her on Hinge. <laughs> so we met on Hinge, as everyone meets these days. Yeah, yeah. I met her on Hinge and I met her at a bar in Philadelphia, a couple blocks from my office. After the date, I get home. I'm living with my parents at the time. I get home. My mom is like asking me all these questions, how the date go. And I get a text from my girlfriend's name is Amanda. I get a text from Amanda and it said, hey, Matt, you didn't happen to pick up one of my iPhones by chance, did you? And I said, no, I didn't pick up one of your iPhones. So she has two devices. She mm -hmm. has her corporate issued iPhone and her personal iPhone. The device that was missing was her corporate issued iOS device. I didn't have it. We checked the bar. The bar we were at didn't have it. She eventually did find my iPhone and saw that her corporate issued iOS device was all the way across the city. So somebody at the bar picked it up and stole it. Her company, unfortunately, didn't have an MDM in place to protect the corporate data in the event an iPhone, an Android device, a Windows laptop is lost or stolen. So going forward, I know she no longer works for this organization. She moved on to a different organization. But I was telling her, hey, Amanda, this is what I do. We can help manage and secure those devices in the event a device is lost or stolen. We can protect the corporate data. We can make sure those devices are set up quickly so no one on the IT team has to manually set up and configure those devices again. And we can make sure you and all your coworkers, they have everything they need on these devices to be productive in their roles. And that's what we do in the MDM, the UEM world, we do at Mass360. Wow. So that that is a cool story. And it sparked the thought in my head. I heard a somewhat similar story, New York City. So this guy was, in fact, in fact sometimes when, when you talk about those kind of features of remote wipe and locking it down, people go, I got my I got my biometrics on here. I get your thumbprint, my face ID, all right, my passcode. They're never going to get in. Bad actors that want to get in will get in. So this story, the guy was like, yeah, I, I was in a cab. Yellow cab in New York City, and I, I'm fumbling with my bag and my backpack and an umbrella, my phone. I get to my destination, I jump out of the car, and I get three steps from the car. And I go, oh my God, my phone's on the, he left his phone on the seat of the cab. And of course, the cab was gone. And he went to his iPad and his backpack and went to find my iPhone. And he said, by the time he logged in, he saw it and then it just went away. And so he filed a police report. The cop was there and he told me, I says, oh yeah. Th that's a big problem here. It's got the criminal underground. They pay the tax, the cabbies, they give them an oh, aluminum no. foil bag to put the phones in, which is like a Faraday cage. It, shut, it shuts down the signal and they take it to a central location. They, they turn it in to get $20 for it. They sell it to some criminal organization and they take it offline. They hack it. They either refurbish the parts or, but that's, that's probably, I would hope the worst case scenario, but the fact that that's even a thing. That's, that's scary. They're hoping you leave a phone in their car because they're going to make a little money. I don't know how much I should get paid on it, but interesting. That's that's a real concern, right? So crazy. Not surprising. Yeah, it shouldn't be. That's what I'm saying. Being naive and expecting everyone to do the right thing is just, especially in the big cities, that's risky. That should not be a policy. So as we wrap up here, Matt, any last words, any anything else you want to share for the record? Yeah, definitely check the show notes. I'm going to have Matt's information in the show notes as well as his YouTube link. Definitely check out if you, if this is your thing and you're trying to learn more about MDM and specifically Mass360, check out uh, his YouTube. But anything else you want to add? Yeah, go, going back to how we started the conversation, this is not that difficult to learn. I learned it within, again, six to nine months where I was having conversations on my own with five, six people on the opposite side of the table. So as the use cases are very similar. The same problems pop up. If anyone has any questions about some questions you should be asking your clients to uncover a Mass360 or an MDM UEM conversation, let me know. I have lots of videos on that topic as well 
on the YouTube channel. But Chris, firstly, thank you for your service. I know we're day after Memorial Day weekend. Thank you for your service. And thanks for having me on the podcast, man. You guys are all worth it. <laughs> and I'm glad you agreed to it, man. Because like I said, I, I saw your videos. Oh, man, this guy, we're, we're cut from the same cloth, just different parts of the country and maybe a different yeah. generation. But, but we're on the same mission. We, we were talking pre-show that it takes someone to grease the skids, grease the gears, have these conversations, share knowledge, share experiences, because that's how we all learn, especially if you're a technology advisor. I, tell, I remind people, especially people have been doing this as long as I have. We, we were selling T1s back in the day, and PRIs yeah. and things. That technology don't even exist hardly anymore. And I remind them, hey, remember when we transitioned to fiber? Remember mm -hmm. we went from analog phone lines to voice over IP? Every new technology has that, that, that learning curve where you're uncomfortable with it because you're like, I don't want to ask a question that I don't know what the answer is. You know? But yeah, the more you do it, the more you research. Because I imagine that six to nine months, I wanted to say, because I'm, I'm thinking if I'm a if I'm a technology advisor listening right now, and I don't know anything about MDM, they'll probably think, I don't have six to nine months to figure this you out. You don't need to. But, but right. You don't need to use your resources, right? Yeah. You had people teach you. You got YouTube channels like yours, like mine. There's yeah. you know, people willing to help you, right? You just need to know what an opportunity looks like. Know that they yeah. have devices and they need to secure them. And it's you, don't a need need. To have a, it's a you don't need to have a discovery conversation. You just need a couple questions in your back pocket to ask a customer that might, again, uncover a conversation with somebody like a Mass 360. That's it. Very simple. All right, man. Hey, I think we covered a lot of ground in a short time, man. So thanks again for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate and, it. And, and there you go. Another episode of The Wireless Way. As always, if you like what you heard, yeah, like, yeah. share, subscribe, tell a friend. That, that helps get this message out to more folks. And I can promise you, I'm not making a dime yet. I don't plan on it anytime soon. It's more by getting the word out. The more people know, as we say, what a rising tide rises all boats. So let's get the word out. And I appreciate you listening. And we'll catch you next time on The Wireless Way.